Hi guys, this is the uh, brush loop uh, with long pips starting off against backspin uh, using the forehand here uh, and I'll go to a slow motion version uh, just after this one. The main things to watch here is really what I'm focusing on in this particular uh, this particular uh, effort is just to really bend the pips. I'm not looking for a solid contact. Uh, I don't want to feel uh, a lot of driving and the wood of the racket coming into play. I'm really trying to brush and feel the pips bending so that feeling a brushing contact rather than a solid contact and um, really using the pips to um, just spin the ball and lift it a little bit uh, with the pips themselves. Um, so it really is a um, almost like a spin loop motion would be the closest rather than a power loop motion really trying to get those pips bending and involved. Um, every so often uh, I would make a little mistake and hit it a little bit solider and those are the ones where the ball basically dives into the net a lot lower um, because I'm not getting any lift at all really then in those cases. Um, and the robot as you can see is just being a little bit erratic about where it's spinning out the ball which is um, causing me every so often just to um, have to scoop it on the forehand just like that. So let's have a look at this in slow motion now and just break it down a little bit slower. So what's happening here is it's not quite uh, as long a motion as you can see there as my uh, normal spin loop. Slightly more abbreviated than really a um, than I would be if I was doing a full-blooded um, spin with normal rubber. But there is definitely um, a little bit of wrist snap and good low backswing there you can see there. And all that's changing really is I'm not doing uh, a big long long follow through. I'm trying to keep it relatively short and just showing there that there is a fairly significant amount of backspin on that ball. Uh, one thing you'll notice, I, which I'll show you at the very end of all, all these um, training videos here, um, you'll see what happens when I really crank up the backspin to very very heavy um, which is almost impossible to lift the ball over the net. Um, so this is quite heavy backspin but not super heavy. Um, if it gets too much backspin it's just too hard to brush it and still lift it. And this is really a, a brush not a not a drive like in some of the other training videos where I've basically hit hard through the ball. And the pace of the ball coming off when you watch it again you can really see the ball is coming off quite slowly because I'm basically skimming and just bending the pips to produce a brush ball but without any real power in it. Looking now from a side on point of view um, it's possible here to really see how I'm lifting that ball up um, and if you just watch, uh, and especially when we go to the slow motion, just watch the actual track of my swing, watch the, how my bat moves, and you'll see a real um, upwards motion of that bat, um, and a lot of wrist snap going in there. In comparison though, the pace of the ball coming off my bat is relatively slow um, in most cases, simply because what I'm doing is brushing. And you can see straight away that every time I make a mistake, and don't get that brush. Um, if I drive it too much, uh, it really just tends to die into the net. Uh, and occasionally, if I don't actually swing fast enough, it falls off my bat and onto halfway up to the table. So it's it is important to make this a, a looping stroke uh, with a fast swing. Uh, other than that, fairly similar to my normal uh, spinny loop against a very heavy backswing backspin uh, with the difference being that I guess the ball is not rotating all that fast it's not doing badly because there is significant backspin on the ball but certainly nowhere near the power and spin that we would be produced with an inverted rubber and again we'll just go to the slow motion now and what we'll see now is you can see really how I am almost leaning backwards occasionally on my um, stroke uh, that's partly because the ball's bouncing very short off the robot and um, I, I can't get too close to the table 
but it's also because really if you watch my stroke it's almost a um a straight up motion um, as I come through so that that's contributing to it again feet wide the balance is is there the shoulder turn waist turn is all there so the basic components that are used to produce a a loop with uh, normal inverted rubber are all still being used I'm still brushing through that ball to produce a spin loop it's just that the ball is actually bending the pips coming off rather slowly uh, with not as much uh, top spin as it would a definite change of pace and I'm trying for because of the way uh, because of the margin for error here I'm trying for a good nine inches or so above the net I'm not trying to get it low above the net I don't want it two feet above the net either but I'm giving myself a generous clearance of the net or I'm aiming for a generous clearance and the reason for that is because there's so little pace on the ball there's no real need um, to to worry about going up a little bit high because it has plenty of time to dip down onto the other side uh, whereas with a faster rubber you'd have to be more careful looking now at the, the backhand against the long pips uh, against the backspin uh, on the backhand side against the back the backspin here I found this uh, probably easier it's it's very close to my normal looping motion uh, against um, backspin you'll find and when you when you watch me performing this same shot against topspin it's really easier against topspin to treat it almost like a counter loop um, rather than a further back from the table loop so it's almost like a, a close to the table um, counter loop over the ball whereas with this backspin motion you can see here I really am um, getting that wrist involved spinning through possibly not quite as much wrist snap and that might be um, I feel related because the the fact is it doesn't feel like it dwells as well it doesn't stay on the bat as well as inverted rubber of course being um, pips and not um not um proper normal rubber but there's definitely got to be a good wrist snap in there to bend the pips um, without enough speed you don't get the bending of the pips and what you'll end up with is a ball that will tend to spray um, either straight down to the table because the backspin takes it right down or you may hit it way way off so the bending of the pips in this case is actually what's allowing us or allowing me to perform this shot with relative consistency if I try to slow down the stroke and still maintain uh, a, a success rate it, re it really wouldn't work so it's not like my lifting shot that I used in the other videos it's not the drive that I attempted to play in the other videos it really is in this case a, a loop motion um, performed with the same intention but uh, producing obviously a very much slower ball with a good change of pace less spin um, but it's an it's an interesting addition to the arsenal and mi mixes in well with my normal back end with inverted so um, it's a, another weapon that's not too hard to play and uh, I'm hoping to bring that in to good effect in uh, future t future times as a um, not a, not a, a weapon itself to try and use all the time against my opponent but a very good variation to um, firstly against a heavy push to open up with occasionally um, I wouldn't want to open up with it all the time I I'd, I'd definitely want to use this maybe two times out of ten um, rather than six or seven times out of ten it's not a main weapon it's a supplemental variation um, against backspin it shouldn't be your strike weapon it should be the variation and that's that's important to make that distinction because against a push you're using this to open the attack and you're generally better to open it up with your inverted rubber not your pips unless you're looking for variation going now to the side view and again possible to see how I'm playing this from my basically my forehand stance um, really am getting the bat down low very vertically swing with a little bit of forward motion but um, quite upwards good wrist snap good cocking of the wrist um, the follow-through again you can see 
not not it's not a super long follow through um and that's because I'm brushing through the ball I'm not expecting it to be it's not going to be a put away um you can't use this to technique to basically uh you're not going to blast the ball through your opposition so if you have a big long follow through you're going to be in trouble because the chances are the ball will come back hopefully the opponent will make a mistake with it but you're definitely not going to whack the ball through him with it so if you take a big long follow through um, you're going to be in trouble uh, in terms of recovery again you can see the dipping of that right shoulder a little bit as I swing down uh, you can see how the stroke really rotates around that elbow um, and in this case it's almost like I'm throwing a frisbee upwards towards the lights rather than forwards and that's because I'm wanting to brush the ball and again the pace of the ball off my racket can be seen to be very very slow um, and every so often I'm not clearing the net because I'm not giving it quite enough um, room and probably worthwhile just going back and having another watch just to see uh, in terms of where I'm landing the ball on the other side of the table and um, just paying paying attention to where it generally lands because you'll find that in terms of the landing depth a lot of the cases it's actually possible to land this sort of mid table um, not I'm not necessarily landing it very very deep and that's simply because the ball hasn't got a lot of, of forward momentum because I'm doing the brushing motion there's not a super amount of lift off the ball it's not really it's not an inverted loop it's just a similar motion to produce a ball that's currently uh, adding a little bit maybe to the backspin already on the ball rather than killing the spin and um, again you'll see at the end of the, this video where I, I up the backspin to a very heavy backspin and really do then struggle to lift the ball up um, because even this stroke is a very very vertical swing um, once you go a little bit harder than with the backswing backspin sorry becomes very very difficult to get the ball over the net um, using a looping motion because you'd actually almost have to be swinging um, with an open bat and that becomes really like a loop with an open bat which is very much a, a strange contradiction in terms but you'll see that later on again here it's really a, at this level of backspin which is medium heavy not super heavy it's a, a feasible stroke and I can use my opponent's backspin to bring the ball down and just have enough lift to clear the net. Okay, we're talking top spin now. Um, this is a, a medium heavy top spin. Uh, even when I used on my own robot at home, uh, the heaviest top spin the butterfly amicus could throw out, it didn't really seem to be a problem. Um, and this robot again is throwing quite a heavy topspin. What I found though on the robot is this is more effective for me performed as almost this counter loop here where I'm fairly close to the table rather than a, a, a counter loop from 2-3 meters back um, where you're losing your effect and the reason this is because um, it, it's partly I guess what I'm looking to do with this stroke and what I'm normally trying to do with this stroke is I'm up to the table I've hopefully forced my opponent back with a strong top spin with my inverted rubber I'm now looking to uh, maintain pressure where he's managed to return the ball with either a counter loop or a block to my pip side and I don't either have the time or the inclination to twiddle and I'm trying to maintain pressure so I'm up at the table trying to dominate play rather than two or three meters away trying to counter loop against another guy's counter loop and that means it's it's almost um, really a a counter loop over the table clamp R style um, rather than a um, a Waldner two or three meters back from the table counter looping rally going now to just the slow motion version here and what you'll see is again I'm I'm up close almost in counter hitting distance reflecting the fact that I've I'm trying to dominate play after my first big open and what I find is using it just as this brush uh, motion when it's done successfully against topspin it really doesn't matter how heavy the topspin is it works fine and that's because when I'm brushing I'm taking all the pace off the ball 
um, the spin doesn't seem to really matter that much it just basically um, if you're getting the brushing right and the timing right the ball just dips down nicely on the other side um, sort of midish table uh, the main thing is every so often when you hit it a little bit hard and get too much solid contact um, the ball does have a tendency to um, uh, sort of fly because the top spin's getting turned into the back spin and it flies a bit long. So it's very important to be uh, looking to brush and being aggressive. Other than that, you can see it really is just a shorter kind of looping stroke. Uh, again, I'm trying to maintain control. I don't want to have a big follow through because it's not a kill. The chances are the ball, the opponent will be able to reach it. He just hopefully won't adjust to the change of pace, the change of spin. So a big follow through would be a mistake because I probably wouldn't have put the ball away. Other than that, you can really see it's just a um, a little bit more forward, forward than upwards, or for, it's more forward than against the backspin, and the side view will confirm that. So let's look now at the side view. Uh, again, you'll be able to see this in a slow motion. There is a, a, a sizable upward component in this swing because I'm trying to brush. Um, also because the grip of the long pimples is nowhere near as much as the grip of an inverted rubber. So if I try and close, just showing there that it has got spin, if I try and close my bat too much forward, um, there's no way I'm going to get the ball over the net. I'm just going to put it down onto the table. So the swing, although I'm brushing with the long pips, it still has to be significantly more upward than it would be with an inverted rubber. And the slow motion will bear that out. Other than that, what it really is similar to is really just a little close to the table counter loop over the ball, but without the forward motion, more in an upward motion. Um, but the brushing feels similar. I'm, I'm trying to skim it just like I would my normal loop. My leg movement, my body turn is all the same that I'd use in a short loop motion. And um, it's producing a ball that's significantly slower and definitely a different spin to what it would be with a, an inverted counter loop uh, and as you can see from how close I'm staying to the table I'm certainly not letting it get up to its maximum height and I'm not taking it two or three meters back so I'm trying to dominate play from close to the table after opening up with my inverted loop I could use it also against a block and just basically use it as a occasional first attack as a variation but generally this would be the second or third stroke in the sequence where I've opened with the inverted uh, or maybe even looped one of my opponents going back trying a counter loop and I want to maintain pressure and not give up my position, dominant position on the table. Now that we're in slow mo it's a good chance just to see how upward that swing really is. Very much an upward motion, brushing with the pips and I'm taking the pace off the ball um, because there's no sponge on the pips, what's happening is the pips are bending and every time I get it right and bend the pips rather than hit with the rubber and hit through with the blade, the ball just basically comes very slowly off the off the rubber and falls virtually on the other side of the net, just like as you can see there. Um, so it really doesn't feel all that hard to do. Um, the focus is don't try and guide the ball, don't try and swing slow to guide it and control it. Swing just like you would, as fast as you would with an inverted rubber, but make it more of an upward swing and concentrate on trying to bend the pips rather than drive through the ball. And you'll find, uh, as I did, uh, it really is quite an effective stroke um, used in its proper place. You can't go mad and decide to hit every single stroke with this um, because you'll lose your variation and your opponent will certainly start to give you some trouble. But used with care in the right places um, it's turning out so far to be a very effective variation for me. Let's go now to the uh, backhand against the uh, against the heavy topspin and definitely on the backhand side you can see in comparison if you go back and compare it to the the backhand against the long uh, against the backspin the heavy backspin this on the backhand i find it easier to use almost as a, a counter loop counter drive 
um, taking it what feels like at around about net height or just a little fraction higher than net height. Uh, if I go much further back it's difficult to feel like you're generating enough top spin um, and I felt like I was a little bit losing control of the ball so I didn't want to be another meter further back trying to counter loop. I wanted to be close to the table um, using that upward motion to basically take the pace off the ball let it fall over on the other side. If I go a meter further back it's not going to fall correctly over the other side of the table. It would fall on my side of the table if I was a metre further back. That would mean that I would actually have to try and drive the ball a bit more to give it the right amount of pace to clear the net. But once I start driving the ball more, I lose some of the brushing effect of the long pips and what's going to happen is I'm going to start getting a ball that rather than being no spin or light top spin, I'm going to start getting a ball that's going to have that back spin on um, and it's going to float more and it gets more and more difficult to control. Um, so on the backhand side I just found it, uh, and even on the forehand, I just found it definitely more easy to control from close in. And again it works um, well with my tactics where I'm not trying to use this as a counter looping um, effect. As a defender if I'm to a metre, two or three metres back from the table, I don't want to be counter looping with my pips, I want to be chopping with my pips anyway. It's not a stroke I need um, to be playing, it would be low percentage. This is intended for someone has uh, driven the ball at you close to the table and you don't have time, you're stuck at the table close in and you don't want to block, you want a variation. Or you've opened on your forehand or your backhand side with a good opening attack your opponent has blocked the ball or counter looped the ball and you're still close into the table you haven't got time to go back you want to keep control of the point and keep, keep your opponent possibly either on the defensive or certainly not give him the chance to dominate you so what you're doing is you're using this stroke to keep the top spin rally going rather than turning it into a back spin rally off your pips allow the change of pace and the variation to hopefully cause your opponent to hesitate, make a mistake or give you a weak ball and then you'll be able to come in again and look to kill the next ball hopefully with your inverted or if he gives you a, a medium sort of strong shot back to the pips you can roll again and I find sometimes I've rolled like this two or three times until I get the kind of ball that actually allows me to put it away. Going now to the side view, uh, this is important um, just to note again my distance from the table, uh, how I'm hitting the ball really on the way up of the, of the ball, not at the top of the bounce. Uh, the rough height of the ball is a few inches above the net when I contact it. And note also, and again it's probably worthwhile going back and watching in all of these videos, just take a look at the flight of the ball as it leaves my racket. And You'll notice that really it's um, not it's upwards sometimes a little bit, but generally it's kind of um, only a few inches up and pretty much forward, even though my swing is radically upwards. So you'll notice that my swing is even here still very very vertical, but it's not producing a ball that goes very very vertical, um, which it would normally do if I was using inverted rubber, and that indicates the less amount of grip that the long pimples have. However, the stroke is not that much difficult, that not that much different from an inverted stroke, apart from learning the fact that it's a different bat angle. But that again is just a, a skill that can be learned to uh, basically teach yourself that if the ball's coming in with a heavy top spin, and you've got your pips, and you want to do this counter looping motion, you brush it using a very open uh, vertical racket rather than a closed forward racket that you'd use with a inverted rubber. Um, and again it's just another skill we've already learnt other strokes that have different racket angles. This is no different and the good thing is once you get used to that angle you actually get a fairly good success rate. Why? Because if the ball's coming in with a reasonable amount of top spin or even just pace, the brush that you're making is the hardest part of the stroke 
getting the brush angle right and making it as a brush rather than a hit. Once you've mastered that aspect, the ball going off the bat is not that fast. It goes in a relatively predictable height above the net and it lands mid-table. So you've got a big safety margin in terms of the result of the stroke. The only difficult part is getting the bat angle right and learning to make a consistent brush contact. And once they are mastered, the stroke itself that it produces is actually a fairly high percentage stroke um, in that respect. It's not as fast and hard and flat as driving the ball with the long pips. So there's a good margin for error in the result of the stroke. Whereas with driving the ball with long pips, it's much, much easier to hit the ball, but it's harder, although the contact is easier, the result is harder to control because the ball hasn't got as much, um, you know, against topspin, it, it's maintaining a lot more backspin. So it's a trade-off. This is, it's tougher to learn the technique, but once the technique is learned, the result is much better. Um, and again, it's just possible to see here, forehand stance, very upward swing, but the ball coming off not all that upward because of the lower spin. And just to finish now, um, I'm just going to go to a couple of just a couple of short clips. Uh, here we are, where I this is at actually the beginning of the night, and I had the robot revved up to do a very very heavy backspin. And as you can see, what happens is even though I'm swinging virtually straight up um, and <laughs> almost backwards at at some point, I'm it's basically at the time of contact, I'm swinging straight up. Um, watch it in slow motion, you'll be able to confirm it. I can't get enough lift um, to actually get the ball over the net. I'd, a I'd ho have to actually open my racket so that it was pointing backwards towards me to get enough lift to get the ball over. And then at that point, it no longer to me feels like a backhand loop. So this stroke is working against heavy backspin, but not super heavy. Okay, just want to finish now, um, just to talk a little bit about this stroke in, in general and where it fits in. Uh, this stroke is not the magic bullet, it's not the secret weapon that you're going to be able to use uh, against any opponent at any time to guarantee yourself a point. Okay, it, it doesn't work like that. Where this stroke fits in is for those of you who are playing close to the table, who are looking for a variation to throw your opponent off, um, or when you, once you've attacked to maintain your attack and maintain pressure by not having to go back to a chop block and go back to a backspin option but to be able to keep driving and top spinning and maintain pressure that way this sort of stroke will allow you to do so um, and allow you to maintain it. Um, for defenders like myself again it's useful uh, not so much when I'm way back from the table defending it's not a counter looping from that I'm not trying to use it for that it's useful useful for when I've initiated an attack my opponent has blocked the ball um, or counter looped which is not uncommon considering that as a defender I'm not using super fast rubber so it's hard to get straight through an opponent and he's maybe blocked the ball to my long pit and I don't want to give up my attacking I don't want to go back and chop it and give him the chance to get in I want to maintain pressure so I can brush loop with the long pips and if he then gives me a weak ball from that I can go to the inverted and put it away if he goes to my long pips again I can again maintain the brush while possibly twiddling looking for another option so it's got to be used with 